Janice Warner, Country Living, and I've got part two of quilts today. And I've got a big variety for you today. Now this is one, uh, my neighbor, I had a neighbor, she she was like a second mom to me. She loved, she quilted, she sewed, she did everything. She painted, there was nothing that that lady could not do. And this was in her stuff up there. And I had never seen anything like this before. Maybe you can tell me if you have and what it's called. Okay, it's not sewed together. And I want to sew this together. Okay, here we go. There's a raggedy, raggedy and doll. And that's the backing and that's the middle. And I've got it all pinned and everything, but I've never seen a quilt like that. That would be beautiful for a little girl's bed. I just wonder if you've ever seen one like that before or not. And I, I've just got to get my, sit down in the chair and, and get this done because it would be really pretty. And it'd be really great for a little girl. So, I, like I said, I've never seen a quilt like this before. And if any of you have, let me know. Uh, this is one I got at a yard sale. And you can tell it was hand quilted. And it's got strawberries all over it. This would be really neat for, you know, the summertime. You could even maybe put it over top of a tablecloth or out and, you know, take it on a picnic with you. And I probably paid maybe a dollar for it. So I just can't pass things up like that when it's so cheap. And uh, like I said, it's hand quilted too. It's really, really bright and summery. And I've got some old ones here. I got in my daddy's trunk. I took a little video of that too. <laughs> uh, I got daddy's old trunk. It was his daddy's actually. And I, I knew there were some old quilts in there, so I opened it up while I and got in there. Now uh, this is old. I got this at a yard sale. And I love y'all. I saw this and I said I just had to get it. Now I'll tell you what they've done here. The backing looks like a tablecloth. That looks exactly like a tablecloth to me for the backing of it. So they've used that as the backing. And they, you know, put the border around it. And, you know, that's really a good idea. I did that before. If you've got some old tablecloths, you could use that for a backing. I love old tablecloths. I've got collections of those, too. Uh, whenever we have a family reunion, I take them with me. And put them on all the picnic tables. But... This is really pretty and uh, and old. Now, talking about that, somewhere, oh, over here it is. I did this. This is like a large throw for fall. And I made this, and what I did, this is an old tablecloth. I had this old tablecloth and I didn't really like it. And I said, that would make a beautiful throw. So that's what I did. I had this fleece fall fleece. I make things usually with what I've got on hand and I've got lots of material and stuff. So I put this fleece on one side of it and I cut out some of the leaves, sewed them onto the back and this is beautiful in the fall. Just put it on, put it on your couch as a throw or whatever you want to use it for and I've got compliments on this before and it was just simple. You know and cheap, it didn't cost very much to make it's an old tablecloth. I usually do with make do, you know, with what I've got. Now, this was one of the old ones I found in Daddy's trunk. And I remember when I got this off of him, I didn't really like it because I thought, well, this is kind of ugly, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's a utilitarian one for sure. But it kind of grows on you. And you can tell it's very old. And they didn't use you know, very many blocks or anything in it. And, you know, this is what the back looks like. And it's pieced a little bit. And they did the, they tied it with the yarn. But this is, like I said, it's really old. And it, I'd say it was either in his family or mom's family. But I like old family things. So, it's a keeper, in my, in my opinion. And this is another family one. 
Um, this was in my mom's stuff. My sister gave it to me. She said, well, this was yours when you were growing up, you know, on your bed. And I do remember it. And she said that Grandma made them for us. Now, I don't remember that part. But this is so old, I cannot use it. Because the backing, the backing is tearing up on it. I mean, the, well, you can't see it here, but it is. The backing is tearing up big time on it. So, it's unusable. But the fact that, you know, this was one I grew up with. When we were young, you know, we had these little space heaters in the rooms. And in the wintertime, my gosh, we'd be under that many quilts, you know, to keep warm. That's just how we kept warm back then. Lots and lots of quilts. I remember waking up one time, and I was looking down on the quilts, and there was this big spider about that big crawling towards me. It scared me to death. <laughs> I probably got out of that bed pretty quick. But that's how we kept warm back in the old days. This was another one that was in the trunk. And it looks like an old, this is a cheater quilt, as you call it. It looks like it's pieced, but it isn't. This is all one piece. But it's an old one. And you can tell it's been around for a long time. It's what they call cheater quilts. Like I said, those, those look like they're pieces, but they're not. It's all one material, which is kind of neat. This was another one that was in Daddy's trunk. Now, you, talking about, you know, old quilts, you can, uh, I think they call them like cutter quilts. Sometimes they get old and torn. You can't really do anything with them. Uh, you can cut them up and make things out of them. I've made uh, ornaments for Christmas trees. Just get a, like a cookie cutter out and make them like gingerbread men or stars. And they're beautiful. I've done lots of them that way. And, uh, and I made I made this teddy bear out of an old quilt that was just, it, it, it couldn't be salvaged. And this was one I believe my aunt gave me. And I hated it, but it just, it did. It just tore all the pieces. So I salvaged some pieces and I made a teddy bear. All you got to do is just get your pattern and make it. Now, and for fall... These are easy if you don't want to do just one big pattern of a leaf. You can put that on your on your chair at night, on the back of your chair. Like I said, I made this one, so it wasn't hard. And I I hand quilted, you know, the top of it and everything. That's a pretty thing for fall. You can make fall throws. And Christmas time, I made I made this for my Christmas tree. And they're easy to make. You just get your pattern. You could do it either way. Reversible, but I like this side right here. I put that around my Christmas tree. I'd always wanted to make one. And I finally took the time and did it. So you don't have to make quilts, you know. You can make anything you want. Now, baby quilts. That's another thing. Now, these, these were not mine. These were ones I picked up at yard sales. And uh, like I say, I don't pay very much when I get things. Usually a dollar or two at the most is all I pay for anything. Now this in here, it was hand quilted. You can tell by looking at it. It's really, it's really nice. But I just noticed this. I don't know if this is why they got rid of it or not. But you see these little, I guess they're dogs. Okay, up here in the corner. The dogs point in a different direction. So uh, they might have accidentally did that and they said, oh no, and this didn't want to keep it, which would be kind of crazy. I would keep it because this is pretty. Okay, now, like I said, this, is, this was not one of mine. This was one I got. And here's another beautiful one I got at a yard sale. And I just can't imagine people getting rid of these, but they do. Now this is just like one piece of quilted material. And they embroidered this on top of it. Isn't that beautiful? That is really, really pretty. And you know, 
Well, the embroidery part would be hard, at, to, for me anyway. I'm not the best in the world at that. But, you, you know, it's just like I said, it's one piece. There's no nothing in the middle of it or anything. And there's no backing on it, but it's beautiful. Now, this one, I'm, I don't like the lace, but other than that, this would be so cute for a little girl, or maybe even a dark quilt. <laughs> uh, the embroidery on it is beautiful. They embroidered all these pieces. This was another yard sale. And the backing is this material. For those of you who like to embroidery, you know, you can make some really pretty things. And here's another simple one. It's one, it's one piece, but it's so cute. I can see a little boy liking this old McDonald's farm. It's just something about quilts. They're just so homey. I just love them. Okay. Now. Now these are my quilts. My babies. My babies. And they'll always be your babies, won't they? Uh, my first baby was born in 1980. First day of spring, 1980. March the 20th. And this is one I got at my baby shower. I really love it. I love them all. My sister-in-law all made this one. Charlie's sister Brenda made this for me. And she put 1980 made with love up there. This is really pretty. I've made I've made a whole number of baby quilts and given them given them to you know family members at showers. And they're little, you know. Now, my mom made this. Now, back then, we didn't know if I was going to have a boy or a girl. And I didn't really want to know anyway. So, yeah, this is one my mom made. And I say it's upside down. <laughs> and Here's another one. I really like this one. I like this, you know, on the edges. See, it's coming apart just a little bit there. But you guys consider these are like 40 years old. But isn't it pretty? And see, could be girl or boy. Now I use these quilts with all three of my boys. I had three. Born 80, 81, and 88. I love my quilts. I never really get rid of them. And this, this is one, I think, a neighbor made for us. She used to be my neighbor in an apartment down there. I'm pretty sure this is the one. And uh, she moved away before I had the baby, but she came back down after I had him and gave me this Mickey Mouse quilt she had made. So that was cute. And that was perfect for a little boy. Nice and big, too. And here's another one. I think this was, wasn't made for my first child. Uh, I'm not sure which one this was. If it was my second or my third one. I believe I got, might have got this from, I'm not sure it might have been one of Charlie's aunts. But I can't remember exactly. But this is really pretty. I love this. Baby Mickey and Minnie and Pluto. And this is just one piece. So see, these would be easy to make. You just buy the material and you can do this on a machine. And I'm looking. This wasn't done on a machine. This looks like it was done by hand. Just, you know, do a straight line and, and went around these. Really pretty. I love this one too. I like them all, Sid. So, and I got another one here. This would be simple. You just embroider this little sheep on there, and you put, looks like there's some cotton underneath it. And 
This is just one piece of material. That was probably, well, I'd say yes, it was already quilted. But anyways, I said I love my quilts. And like I said, throws are easy to make if you're first starting out. I've got Christmas throws too. That throw up in my Christmas thing. And I'll admit the teddy bears are a little hard. So unless you're good at sewing, I would not attempt that at first. But, uh, and I've got lots of pieces, lots of blocks, you know, that I picked up here, there, and yard. I just need to, I need to take the time to do it, you know. But uh, this might give you some ideas, like I said, and you know, you don't have to use them for quilts. You can take them on picnics with you, whatever you want to do. And uh, like I say use the old tablecloths as the backing material, and that works really good. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at my my old quilts and some of my new things. And like I say, comment and uh, let me know. And if you know anything about that Raggedy Ann doll quilt that I showed you at the beginning, you know, let me know. I've never seen one like that before. So, okay, this is Janet Swan for Country Living.